the Massachusetts Drug Driving Commission recently released its final report, which includes many suggestions for improving safety on the roads now that marijuana is legal for adults 21 and older. Those suggestions could be used to inform any law or laws passed related to drug driving penalties. But will we see a law anytime soon? That's among the things that I asked State Representative Aaron Vega, a Democrat, and Republican State Representative Nick Boldiga. You know, they went over a bunch of uh, different recommendations. There's about 19 in total. And I think that some of them um, could be a little bit re repetitive and that there's other, <clears throat> excuse me, other laws that already address some of them, I believe. I think the biggest thing is, is that we have to approach it from a really broader picture about whether or not, um, you know, the courts say there's some technicalities and that's why a lot of people get let off of OUI charges. I think it's a broader picture of do we want our roadways safe? So when the motoring public is out there, our children are out there crossing the streets, do we want to take actions and to have our judges take actions in the courtroom to protect the broader picture of we need safe roadways? So if all these technicalities are what's allowing people to, you know, drive under the influence of drugs, I think that our justices really need to approach it from that angle of the broader picture of did the police officer make his case? Did he stop them for the right reasons of impaired driving? Were they erratic, et cetera, et cetera? Were they a danger to the public? And then go from there and address it from that, that standpoint. Okay. Representative Vega, how about for you? Anything that stood out in the recommendations? Well, I concur a lot with what with, with Rep. Bodega said. And I think that, you know, for all of us on the committee and all of us in the legislature, public safety was critical when we passed this bill and got the commission going. For me, the biggest point is, is probably the officer training. Um, we talk about mental health. We talk about the opioid crisis now. You know, our first responders are out there dealing with things that they didn't necessarily learn in the academy. And so it does take sort of, you know, new training to up to know what to look for, to know, you know, is somebody, is somebody high, is somebody drunk, is someone on some other kind of drug, what's going on? So I think the, the training for officers and the looking at the, the drug investigator and officers to sort of be able to view the situation from a third perspective and really see what's going on, I think that's the stuff that's going to be critical and probably help the court systems as well. So to your point, the drug recognition experts, uh, there are about, I think, 150 statewide. Some, most are police officers, but some are in other areas. And that was one of those 19 recommendations, like you pointed to, that the commission pointed out. There's a need for more of. I think they're going to push for, or they suggested, around 350, 51, which would give us one for each city and town in Massachusetts. But we've talked about this here uh, on the program before. Drug recognition experts are really more deep dive trained in what to look for beyond alcohol and specifically um, how to get at that. In terms of that, though, uh, one of the members who was on the commission, who's with the ACLU, has a concern that that kind of leaves it open to interpretation, possibly open to racial profiling and other challenges, civil liberties, violations. Is there a concern for either of you uh, like that the APCL well, you pointed well, I think out? That the, the bigger concern is, is that we're putting too much emphasis on the drug recognition expert. Um, I was a police officer in Connecticut a number of years ago, full time. I graduated from their police academy. I've also graduated from the Western Mass Reserve Police Academy, and I'm currently an auxiliary police officer. So our officers do have the training necessary to recognize someone that is impaired behind the wheel, regardless if it's alcohol or drugs. However, when it goes to court, they're tossed out on all these technicalities because at the roadside, they can't test for marijuana. And however, in the past year and a half, you've seen that the courts have tossed out state police breathalyzer exams for the, la the tens of thousands of cases. So if we put it just on 351 drug recognition experts, each one of those experts, whether or not that individual writes a bad report, whether they did something wrong at the roadside, the cases are still going to be tossed out. So it comes back to not the drug recognition experts. The drug rec recognition experts should be every police officer that's out on the road. They're trained to observe erratic operation. Um, we have statutes that are driving to endanger. Um, those statutes will already keep people off the road. The issue is that the courts, they want some sort of, um, well, it's beyond a reasonable doubt, and other states don't have beyond a reasonable doubt. The testing, I think this came up in the commission's report too, the testing that's currently available isn't all of that hard and fast. I mean, with alcohol, you can say 0.08, you're over that limit, boom, that's a violation. But when it comes to marijuana, the concern is you may have used marijuana three weeks ago, you're in your car and they test you, uh, blood and saliva is gonna show that you use that marijuana. Is that fair? So I think that the technology is gonna, be, is gonna be the critical point in this that's not in there, the critical factor, if you will, right? So the breathalyzer test has evolved over the last 20 years since it's been used, right? And it gets more and more refined. And you're exactly right, it's not even just three weeks ago, it's what if that person was at a party last night or, or there was an event where they did some kind of edibles, 
but the next day, the next morning, they're going to work, they're fine, but they're still in their system. So you can't do a blood test right there. So I, we were talking about some states have some thresholds that they allow, um, but again, that has become, that opens up to lawsuits. So I think the technology is gonna be this factor that with the training is gonna become, at some point, be able to really address this issue. Well then back to the breathalyzer exams, just for alcohol per se, they've tossed out tens of thousands of breathalyzer cases because the state police was not maintaining the evidence. So we're back to the issue that the officer observed erratic operation in the vehicle performed a breathalyzer exam and it was still tossed out of court. So the person was still a danger to themselves and the public while on the streets driving a motor vehicle and no action was taken because the breathalyzer test was tossed out and that was for alcohol. So the same thing is going to happen even if a test is comes up for THC or mar marijuana on the spot that says in the last 10 minutes someone um, ingested marijuana or last hour, the same thing could happen with that new test in, in the future. So it comes back to did the police officer use their judgment? Did they make the call that the person was uh, operating erratically on the street where they had danger to others while driving a motor vehicle and getting them off the street and that's what the court should be going on. And there's also the public relations tube aspect of this where you know like you've seen now not just with the drunk driving but like you know the buzz driving you know that that's still illegal I think it's people need to recognize that you're impaired if you're smoking marijuana and driving that that's an issue and so you know it's not that this hasn't been happening before it was legalized uh, now we're concerned more concerned about it. now we have a way to address it and we have a need to address it but again it, there's an education campaign out there especially with all the different products out there Which that are affecting a big people part of what the commission big part. It's said a, it's a public uh, awareness campaign. they said that they really need to make sure that that's part of it. But what I'm hearing, I think, from both of you in a roundabout way is that the law, if you know the, the legislature moves forward and actually uh, puts forth some kind of law, because the commission, these are just recommendations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there needs to be legislative action on the part of you coming forward with a bill and then obviously it getting <laughs> passed into law. But the nuance that's going to be involved in this short of some hard and fast testing that'll tell you, you know, point whatever nanograms of marijuana uh, are too much for you to be on the roadway safely. How do you legislate nuance? Correct. I think the other issue is, is, you know, that's the biggest hurdle. And like I said, the BAC tests are still being thrown out to this day. Tens of thousands of cases. The same thing is going to happen with marijuana tests if one is created in the next decade. The same thing is going to happen. The same thing happens right now where if someone has a couple glasses of wine and they're on some sort of pre prescription medication, they can still be under the influence but not over a BAC. Doesn't mean they should be behind, behind the wheel of a vehicle. Yeah. So the, the same thing is going on right now. We have to approach it from the standpoint of were they a danger on the roadway regardless of what a BH, BAC or a THC test might tell us. Well, and I think also that speaks to the larger charge that the commission was supposed to be looking at, not only marijuana, but anything. I mean, we've heard tragic stories in this region about people who drove under the influence of heroin or other opioids killing people. Right. Uh, and there's no legal, you know, heroin's illegal, but there's no legal limit for heroin. Right. Um, so I think that speaks to another piece perhaps here. The commission said, okay, we put forth these 19. The majority of them do mention marijuana specifically. However, we think our work should continue as, uh, you know, among the legislators who passed the law that created this commission, should the work of the commission continue? Absolutely. I think that because because of looking at those history of those cases, looking at the technology and working together in conjunction with the legislature and the CCC on that public campaign. You know, so what is the message? What are the messages being used in Colorado and other places? Nevada, let's look at what's being said. You know, let's talk about the campaign that's been done for our young people that, you know, that even though this is legal, it's not good for you. It's not healthy for young people to be doing There's, You know, we have a drinking age. There's a smoking age. These are for reasons. And I think that that's going to be a real part of the campaign. Just briefly, 10 or 15 seconds each. Yeah. How soon do you think we'll see legislation around this issue? I think we're all concerned about what's going on right now on the roadways. We want people to be safe. The education campaign needs to continue. People need to know that they cannot operate motor vehicles under the influence of alcohol or drugs, regardless of whether or not marijuana is legal. Um, so I think we need to focus on that. I think it's going to be a little bit uh, before we come up with something to put in place because the issue is so new and there's no tests out there for THC. So I think something needs to happen, but I'm not sure what we can come up with right now. I think it needs to come back to the courts. Yeah, I wouldn't say you're going to see anything in the next couple of weeks or a couple of months. I think this is a, is a longer conversation, again, in conjunction with other states, what other states are doing, and with the courts, and at some point with the federal government as well.